What's up guys, this is Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at duck typing in JavaScript. If you're learning to code right now or you're just looking to get better at development, definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're publishing content like this every single day. Also check down in the description for some free stuff that we're giving away. Uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the episode. I've been working through these design patterns and I realized that I did something in the episode about the strategy pattern and we'll come and look at this code for the strategy pattern in just a second. But I worked through it and I built out this concept um, called duck typing accidentally and I haven't really heard many people talk about this in JavaScript. I think it originated in the Ruby community so I thought I would go ahead and give a quick example um, so here I've just worked up a really simple class or a file, it's just run.js and it's got three classes with nothing in them right now so they're just basically named objects. And then we have a run method, or function rather, which takes in a mode of transport and then it checks and says if the mode of transport is an instance of airplane, you know, log out, I'm on a plane, be there in two hours, and then we do the same sort of thing for cars and bicycles. Then down here at the bottom we just queue up a new transport and then run this function, run the run function. Maybe I should have come up with a better name, but that's okay for now. You get the idea, this is really simple. So if we execute this file with node over here, we'll see that we just print out these three statements, um, which is exactly what we expect to happen. So let's talk about what's wrong with this code. So we're here in this conditional uh, area and we're checking for if you're an airplane I want to do this thing if you're a car I want to do this thing so on and so forth and what this is telling us is that really what we want to do is instead of inspecting the object to try to decide what to do we really just want to tell that object what to do and in order to do that we can leverage this idea of duck typing so duck typing is essentially this notion of if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a duck, or something like that. I'm probably messing up the saying. Um, but what that really means in programming is that if I've got an object and it has the API that I care about, then I don't really care what that object is. As long as I can just talk to it, I can send it the messages that I want to send it, I don't really care what it is. It should have its own responsibility for handling the message, um, if that makes sense. So. What we can actually do is for each one of these objects we're going to define a method which is going to handle this console log and that's going to be called the same thing in every class hence the if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck it must be a duck so from the perspective of this run function it could tell the difference between the objects because it can inspect with instance of but the philosophy is that it shouldn't need to care. It doesn't care what the object is as long as it can just send the right message. So we can actually create a function in here called message. Um, and we can just print out our console log here. And in actual fact, if we want to do this super iteratively like I normally do here, uh, we can just create the same thing message for each one. And so what this is going to allow us to do is inside of run, now we should just be able to call mode of transport dot message. And if we run this, it shouldn't do anything different. And so that means that, okay, it knows how to talk to all of our objects now. And then we can actually move this logic up here into the message function for each one. And this is essentially just going to recreate our behavior. So now we can get rid of all this and now we just have this one simple call to the object and we get the exact same behavior. As with most of these design pattern videos, this is a really, really simple example, but I think it's important to use simple examples to think through this because take a look at what's different about this run function now. Now this run function does not care what kind of object you give it as long as it knows how to uh, respond to a message uh, function basically. Um, and that's great because now we've essentially made this uh, reusable. So we can create other types of transport. We could create a train and add it. And what that means is that we've reduced the dependencies uh, between our run function and all these other classes. Because before, if we wanted to actually add a train, we would have had to modify the run function. 
And you can tell when you have dependencies in a bunch of different ways. Um, one of the key ways is if your function or if your class knows the name of another class, that means there's a dependency. Um, so it did know the name of all of those uh, airplane, car, bicycle, and so on. Part of that is additionally that you know there's a dependency if when you change one file you have to change another file in order to get the thing to work now you've got a dependency between those things so that's pretty nice I mean this is obviously ridiculously simple but it's a good illustration so let's look over here at our employee.js class from this strategy pattern and if you want to get the full explanation jump over to that video uh, it should be pretty recent on the channel but I wanted to look at this strategy uh, down here and look at what's going on with our send payment method. So here you can see that we're just initializing a new strategy class and then we're calling strategy .send, or payment amount right here. And then up here these classes just implement payment amount. And in other situations, in other languages, what you would need to do is actually create, like if it's a strongly typed language, if you're dealing with like Java or something like that, um, I haven't worked with a, like a strongly typed language in a long time, so uh, if I say something wrong about this, forgive me, but uh, what you would need to do is actually create a superclass of strategy or an interface of strategy or something and inherit from it for these two here. Uh, same thing in this class for our transport. If we were actually going to do this in a strongly typed language, I think we would need to create an interface or a superclass called like transportation or something. And then we would in here have to specify that this is going to be a transportation. The nice thing in a dynamic language, we don't have to do that. We can just say, hey look, I've got the right function. I don't care what you are. Just send me that message and I'll respond to it properly. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's a nice benefit of dynamic languages. Um, you can take advantage of these sort of like uh, just, it's not a hack, but it's a, it's taking advantage of the fact that you just need to have the same API. You don't have to have, you know, formal inheritance or anything like that. So that's duck typing. I hope that's helpful and interesting to you. Um, that's it for this episode. Hopefully it's a little bit short. I've lost track of exactly how long it is, but um, anyway, I will talk to you in the next episode.